we saw that the one remaining challenge is how do we actually make our real robot or our model of the real robot, which was the unicycle model, behave or act like the simpler model, x dot is equal to u, that we used when we designed our navigation architecture. And we really have a problem because we use the simplest possible model, x dot equal to u, as the basis for our control design. And then we started switching between go to goal, follow wall, follow wall counterclockwise, uh, avoid obstacles, and so forth. And uh, the navigation architecture we ended up with is this, as we've seen a couple of times now, rather messy looking hybrid system. Now, what we need to do is somehow come up with a way of making the real robot relevant, or this model relevant to the real robot. And, uh, we would like also to do this in such a way that we don't have to worry too much about what kind of robot is it that we're using. We want this navigation architecture to be relevant for differential drive robots or four-wheel robots or snake robots or flying quad rotors. So the question is how do we do this? And the standard way of approaching this problem is to produce a layered architecture where you have different levels of abstraction. So in today's lecture, I'm going to talk about the standard layers that people think of when they build architectures, uh, high-level architectures for robotic systems. Well, the standard and most canonical way in which people approach this is to have three levels. And uh, borrowing terms from the military tactical literature, uh, people typically talk about a strategic level, an operational level, and a tactical level. So the strategic level is high level. Where do we go? Recall, for instance, then we have go-to-goal behaviors. We have a goal point. Well, where did that goal point come from? Who decided that that's reasonable? Well, that happens at the strategic level where the high level decisions are being made. And then at the operational level, you're trying to figure out, OK, I know that there is a goal point somewhere out there. Where do I go now? Meaning this is a short term, low-level planning problem. And in many ways, we can think of our x dot equal to u model to live at the operational level. But then we have the lowest level, the tactical level, which asks, well, OK, I know that I want to go this way, but how do I actually do that? I'm a snake robot. How does a snake go in this direction? Or I'm a differential drive mobile robot, a unicycle. How do I actually go in this direction? So the question of mapping x dot equal to u onto the real robot is a question of moving in between these two levels or layers in the architecture. Well, if we want to be slightly less militaristic, which maybe we do, uh, we can call the highest level a high-level planning level. Right? We want to plan where the intermediary goal points should really be. And then the low-level planning uh, Th that's the question of which direction to move in between these goal points. And then at the execution level that we previously called the tactical level, it's just a matter of how do we actually execute this? How do we make the robot do what it is that we want it to do? And I should point out that the highest level we haven't touched at all in this course. In fact, we have assumed that someone very clever has designed a, an AI, artificial intelligence algorithm, for somehow producing the correct goal points. And then, at the low level, well, that's where our navigation architecture sits. That's where we're assuming that x dot is equal to u, which really tells the robot, if I'm here, this is x, then u is really going to be, this is the direction in which I would like to move. So the navigation act architecture we've seen really sits squarely at the low level planning layer. And then, of course, uh, the execution level. Well, one thing we can do is simply say, here is our actual system. Let's say x dot is, oh, it's, let's say it's a complicated nonlinear system. This is a slithering robot that every now and then can fly. I don't know how to build that, but if I did, that's what this system would be. And now I would like it to follow, let's say, this reference. And this reference is generated as if x dot is equal to u. Well, this is simply R, right? a reference signal. And we have seen repeatedly how to design controllers for making systems, general systems, 
track reference signals. So the execution problem be really becomes a question of how do you track reference signals? Well, we kind of know how to do this, at least for linear systems. So that seems rather promising as far as I can, I can tell. OK, let's discuss these levels a little bit more. Uh, at the high level, like I said, it's really not part of the, the course. There are many, many different ways in which uh, people think about how to produce these uh, high-level plants. Typically, you somehow discretize the world into a graph structure or some high kind of grid structure, and then you can use Dijkstra's algorithm for searching through graphs, something called dynamic programming. There are more specialized robotic planning algorithms, something called A star, a version of A star called D star, which is a dynamic version of A star, or something called RRTs, rapidly exploring randomized trees. These are all methods for generating these intermediary waypoints. And this big picture here you're seeing underneath it is this is the kind of maps that we produced at the high level, the kind of plants and maps we produced at the high level at when we were building this uh, autonomous self-driving car. So this map clearly doesn't tell us how the car should drive, but it tells us where do we want to go uh, and how are the things we want to go to uh, connected. So all I want to say about this is if you're interested in probing further when it comes to high-level methods, uh, these uh, six different methods are good places to start uh, if you want to, uh, to learn more about high-level planning. Okay, low level. Well, ta-da, we already know how to do this. The simplest thing is to assume a very simple model. In our case, we've said x dot is equal to u, and then we simply go to work. And again, if I do that, my model x dot is equal to u model, it's going to produce a trajectory that we would like the actual robot to follow. So this trajectory becomes the plan, the low-level plan, that will take us, let's say that here is a, a goal point, and here was an obstacle. Well, this low-level plan will tell us how we should go about avoiding the obstacle and go into goal, but it doesn't at all tell us how to achieve it, which leaves us with the execution level. Uh, as you can see, this is the video that I've shown before of our uh, self-driving car that is trying to, uh, to drive around in, in the world. Well, the car is not a unicycle, but it's almost a unicycle. Uh, but if we're trying to build a navigation system explicitly for a unicycle, it's not going to work. It's going to be too complex. So what we had to do in order to make this car actually drive was, well, plan at a high level, then a low level, and then make the car execute the, the trajectory. So for instance, here you're seeing the car overtaking an obstacle. Uh, and what's going on here is that we have a low-level planner that's telling it roughly how to do it. And as you can see, the car overshoots a little bit. And this is due to the fact that the execution level reference tracker isn't perfect. OK, so what we've now arrived at is a layered architecture where at the highest level, we're generating sequences of intermediary waypoints. Well, those waypoints are fed into the plan level, or the low-level plan level, where our navigation architecture generates reference trajectories. Well, these reference trajectories are then fed into our actual nonlinear system. The actual dynamics, where u now, well, it's going to be a function of the state, and r, where r is the reference. And then out of the tracker comes the actual tractor, the actual control signals that will be running on the robot. So what I want to do in the next lecture is take this high-level view of a layered architecture for robots and apply it to the Capiras, or to differential drive mobile robots in general. So that's it.